Hey, my friend, today I want to talk to you about the Tamron 150 to 500 millimeter lens, 5 to 6.7 aperture. I'm going to tell you what I like and um, a couple things I don't like. Not too long ago, I put out a poll on YouTube and asked you guys, what lens would you like me to review? And well, the top one, the Sony 200 600 millimeter was not available. So I had to go to the next available one, which was the Tamron 150 to 500. And I had it all planned out. I had five potential events I could shoot, two softball games, two baseball games, and even finally a track and field event. I was all excited. And then this happened. I checked the seven day weather forecast and it said, you know, maybe I might miss one event, maybe two. I thought two out of five, that's no big deal, but it just kept raining. But you know me, I'm not giving up that easily. I extended my rental for another week, another week just so I could bring you guys these images you're gonna see in a little bit later. Before we jump to the images, let's talk a little bit about the Tamron 150 to 500 millimeter lens. This lens is priced at around $1,200 and it has the typical features to it. Vibration compensation, which has three different modes, has a focus distance range limit switch, autofocus manual switch, has a lens lock. It also has 25 elements in 16 groups. The weight of this lens with the tripod mount is 1,880 grams, which is a little over four pounds. The length is about 209 and a half millimeters, which is about 8.3 inches without the hood. And it also has some strap attachments. First, I'm gonna talk about what I don't like about the lens. This is really stiff. It takes a lot of effort to get this to go from 150 to 500. So if you're shooting close up, say at 150, say on third base, like in a softball game, you're usually pretty close. You have to go out to the outfield. It might take you a second to get there. You might possibly miss the shot. Now, granted, it's probably a newer lens. It's gotta get broken in a little bit, but I do have a comparison here for you. This is a Sigma. 150 to 500, and you can see this is really smooth and fast. I like that. Truthfully, I could probably get used to that and it wouldn't bug me after a couple months. But here's something that does bug me about this lens. It has what they call a flex zoom lock. So this piece slides back and forth, locks into place. So if you're at, say, 150 millimeters, you can lock it into place. It's not gonna move unless you retract that piece. So here's what was happening. I was out there, softball game, shooting the batter, trying to get the good ball on bat, a good swing type shot. My hand would slip up and lock it into place and I didn't realize it. The ball would get hit, go to the outfield and I would be struggling a second until I remembered to do that and then I could extend out to 500 millimeters. That happened several times to where I would get stuck right there and like, dang it, ah, gurg. I'd start getting a little frustrated. Now a small detail that I really did like about this lens, it's got little places for your strap for your camera strap. So with my peak design, my little anchor links, I can just slide them right in there. So when I take that, take my strap right on, then the other piece goes to the camera. Gives me a good balancing out and there's not too much pressure put on the camera itself. Now it's time to take a look at some images and I paired this lens with the Sony a7 IV camera body. And finally, the sun came out. I was so excited. I was able to get to a softball game and try this lens in a real life situation. Here's the field I was shooting at. Started over on the third base line because first base was packed with parents. And what I do is this right here. I kneel down so I can shoot right over the top of the fence. Another thing I like to be able to do when I'm at a game is be safe because those foul balls, they can come at you pretty fast. And now let's jump into some photos. What we got is reference photos these first few. Straight out of the camera, no editing at all. There's no cropping, no post-processing. This is what it looked like straight out of the camera. This is mostly for reference. So this first image, what we got here, this is 150 millimeters. You saw my positioning just off of the third base. And this right here is at 500 millimeters. You can see the detail you can get at 500 millimeter. And it looks like to me like, um, yeah, they need to uh, clean their sign a little bit. But again, that's what it looked like at 150 millimeters. This is 500 millimeters. If you shoot softball or baseball or even a fan of either one of those sports, you probably realize this is first base. And again, this is just a reference photo. So you can see I'm at 355 millimeters and it's looking really good, nice and, and sharp. Next up, this is 150 millimeter right on third baseline. This was actually taken during the game. Again, no cropping straight out of the camera. 
this right here, 500 millimeter looking directly at the pitcher. This is all you can fit in at 500 millimeter on this field. And look how sharp that is. It's so sharp. So now let's go back and we're going to take a look at some action shots. These action shots, no post-processing, straight out of the camera JPEGs. The only thing I did to these was do some cropping because the reach wasn't quite enough. But again, with the Sony a7 IV, 33 megapixels, yeah. So this is being shot from right around center field, shooting through the fence line. I want you to take a look at the ball here. Nice and sharp, the images. This is kind of my version of the frozen ball. Next up, same area, sliding into second base. Nice little images, nice and sharp. This shot, again, shooting through center field all the way to home plate. Got some good action going on in this photo, as well as the sharpness. The sharpness, you can see the ball. You can read, almost read the lettering on the ball from that distance. Again, I did do a little bit of cropping, but not very much. Now, this is from third base, shooting over to first base. I want you to take a look at the sharpness here. Got the eyes nice and clear. That's what you want. You can read the lettering on the uniforms. I'm going to zoom in on this one. I want you to see how crisp and clear and sharp this image is. You can read the wording on the glove. I mean, there's just, it just, it's a really good looking image. The background's out of focus just enough. And again, no post-processing. This is straight out of the camera JPEG. I really did enjoy shooting with this Tamron lens and the Sony a7 IV. Now this shot, not a great shot, but I kept this in here for one main reason, because everybody always talks about what should my shutter speed? What's the minimum shutter speed so I can freeze the action? Do I need to be at 1000? Do I need to be at 4000? How's 500? Well, I want you to see this one. This is shot at 2000 and it's still got some blur on it. So it all depends on what you're shooting, the sports you're shooting. But in this one, you got the swing, you got the ball hitting the bat, and they're both still blurred even at one two thousandths of a second. Here's one of my favorite shots. Again, you can just see the turf from the field just bouncing up and it's nice and sharp and looks great. There are four main things about this lens which I think are worth considering if you're looking into getting a telephoto lens of this caliber. One of those would be the compact size and the weight. The second thing would be the sharpness of the images. You saw them, very sharp, nice, crisp, and clean, and the background was blowing out nicely. Number three, fast, reliable autofocus. You always want that when you're shooting sports because things move quickly. And the price, it comes in at $1,200. Now, like five, 10 years ago, a third-party lens, $1,200, you would not expect results that you get from the lens that I just showed you guys. I am really impressed, as you can tell. <laughs> Keep in mind, this lens is not trying to compete with the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter, which comes in at $2,000. It's not gonna compete with that one. I do think it's a good competitor to the Sony 100 to 400 G Master. Prove me wrong. I've shot all three of these lenses. I think I'd do the 200 to 600, and then this Tamron lens, and then I'd probably put the 100 to 400 in the third place. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Also with this lens, you could shoot landscape, you could shoot wildlife, you could shoot birds, you could shoot almost anything. It's that versatile. All right, everybody, hopefully this has inspired you to maybe make a new purchase or maybe at least grab your cameras and get out and shoot.